Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting video. In our last two videos, we discovered uh, bad debts and how to account for those. Um, we looked at the direct write-off method and we saw that there was no adjusting entries for that method. And then we looked at the allowance method and we saw how we would account for everything using the allowance method, as well as how we would figure out how much we need to credit to allowance for doubtful accounts at the end of every year in our adjusting entry. Now here in this video, Video, we are going to still be using the allowance method. However, again, a method within a method, we're going to see how the aging of receivables affects our adjusting entry at the end of the year. So as you can see here, I went ahead and I kept all of our debits and credits from the last video when we were doing the allowance method using the percentage of sales method within it. Now, just to kind of show how these two compare, Everything here is the same for the percentage of sales. The only difference is we're going to have to use a different amount at the end of the year for our adjusting entry. So we're still debiting bad debt expense and crediting allowance for doubtful accounts whenever we have to record an adjusting entry. And we're still debiting allowance for doubtful accounts and crediting accounts receivable whenever we have to write off an account. So the main difference here is just the number. So everything will stay the same. Let's just figure out these numbers. So here, XYZ company estimates that $600 of, it account, of its accounts will be uncollectible. So in this case, we don't have a balance and allowance for doubtful accounts. So in order to record this $600 increase, we will simply input it. Now keep in mind, it is typically not that easy. And this is why I have a T account down here to come and dem kind of demonstrate what we're doing and why we're doing it. So the balance, and allowance for doubtful accounts at the end of year one is $600. Now let's take a look at this entry on 6-2 and figure out how this affected our allowance for doubtful accounts account. Well, on June 2nd, we debited allowance for doubtful accounts for $500. So let's go ahead and put that on the debit side of this T account. Okay, and now that we have recorded that $500, what is the new balance and allowance for doubtful accounts after this transaction? Okay, we'll think of it like a scale, um, a weighing scale. We have $600 on one side, $500 on the other. They kind of offset each other, but the right side is heavier, there's more. So we have $100 credit balance in our allowance for doubtful accounts account. So now that we have this $100, let's take a look at this next transaction here or next piece of information. XYZ company estimates that $550 of, it, of its accounts will be uncollectible. Now this $550, this is the ending balance in the account. So they're telling us that after we record this adjusting entry, we want to have $550 in that account. So if it currently has a balance of 100 and we want to get it to 550, how much do we have to credit to that account? Okay, well we have to credit $450. So that's the amount that we are going to be crediting to the new account. And at that point, just go ahead and include a little bit here. We have a balance and here's our other balance just to kind of show. Okay, now, that we have accounted for December 31st in year two. Let's take a look at how February 5th affected our T account. Well, on February 5th, we debited allowance for doubtful accounts for $450. And then we also, let's see, right here, we debited it again for $150. So we have to record that debit to allowance for doubtful accounts for $150 again. Now that we have some information, Let's find out the new balance and allowance for doubtful accounts. Well, we had a $550 balance here. And on this side, we have a total of $600. So what is the actual balance in this account? Well, we have 600 on this side, 550 on this side. So which side is heavier? This side, this side has more. And what is the difference? Well, that'd be $50. So there's $50 in the account right now. So bringing this down one more step, at the end of the year, XYZ Company estimates that $800 of its accounts receivable will be uncollectible. So we need to figure out exactly how much we need to record in order to bring it to that 
final balance of $800. So let's go ahead and put another balance line so we could do the math. Okay. So it currently has a balance of $50. We want to bring it to a balance of $800. So how are we going to really accomplish this? In order to do this, we need to evaluate what is happening with these two amounts. We have a $50 debit balance. So what do we have to put here in order to bring it to $800? Well, this debit here will offset something that we put here. So we actually have to put more in. We have to add those two amounts. So we have to put a total of $850 into this credit over here. So essentially, every time that you see that something needs to be adjusted, find the balance in that account and then determine what you have to do to bring it to the new balance that has been estimated. It does take some practice, so be sure to watch this video a few times and try practicing this concept, and eventually you'll be able to get it. Now, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comments below, and we'll be able to address those then. In the meantime, happy studying!